uh, four years ago now, read the Bible six times, and then I went to Metropolitan Museum right up here. You can go up here and see all these pictures of Jesus Christ that are white. When were they made? 1400s, right after the Dark Ages. Why did we go into the Dark Ages? We went into the Dark Ages to cover up all the black men and get rid of all the printing and all of the pictures of the black men in history. That's why we were in the Dark Ages. We came out of the Dark Ages, we came out in Rome, Italy. Michelangelo was paid by the Vatican to draw these pictures. All those pictures you see of Jesus Christ in the Metropolitan Museum right now in New York City were made in 1400s by the Vatican. A man was paid to draw those. Shalom Israel and welcome to another edition of Yashar Allah Library. Today the book we're going to examine is a book called The Roman Emperors by Michael Grant. The reason why I chose to go into this book today is because you've probably heard brothers teaching that blacks overthrew the Roman Empire in the year 193 AD. You've heard that probably if you've been in Israel long enough. Well that's true. But some brothers and sisters may not be sure how to go about proving that if it was necessary for you to prove that that's a true fact. Because the so-called white man doesn't just come out and put the information out there just like that. you got to research it. So this book called The Roman Emperors by Michael Grant is one source that you can use to prove that blacks did overthrow the Roman Empire in the year 193 AD under a Roman general named Severus Septimius and his arch-rival, Persinius Niger and just the name alone Persinius Niger already gives you clues but before we get into that book I want to get into another book real quick and the reason why I'm going into this other book is because I have to show you how the so-called white man works the so-called white man will show you something that's true you'll look at it and you'll see it for what it is and then he'll comment on it and tell you that you're really looking at something else and that's what you're going to find out in this book called The Roman Emperors. The so-called white man is going to tell you the truth, and right behind the truth he's going to come with a lie. And I'm going to show you that. But before I show you that in that book, I'm going to use another book to show you another example of another author doing the exact same thing. And the name of this book is called Early Spanish Manuscript Illuminations. That's the name of the first book. All right? So now, in this book called Early Spanish Manuscript Illuminations, we're going to turn to page 55, okay? Now, we're going to read this caption right here, and then we're going to take a look at the corresponding picture that's referred to in this caption, and pay close attention to how we know the so-called white man is nothing but a liar, man. He is the devil, and he is a deceiver, and this is proof, okay? So let's read what it says right here, the highlighted caption on page 55. It says, Christ, whose darkened flesh tones now give him an almost negroid cast, is shown enthroned between two cherubs within a great circular firmament suspended from the hands of two seraphs. So now let's read that first statement again. Christ, whose darkened flesh tones give him an almost negroid cast. So, what you're about to look at, which is figure 8A, is supposed to be an icon of Christ that looks almost Negro. Not quite Negro, almost Negro. Okay? So now, looking at page 54, this is an image from...
from early Spain. That's why the book is called Early Spanish Manuscript Illuminations. When it says early, it's talking about earlier than 1492, earlier than 1453, pre-Renaissance art. Now, enthroned in the middle is Christ. And on either side of him is two cherubs. Now, take a look at this picture. Clearly, you can see that Christ and the two cherubs, the angels, are all pictured and painted as being black. They have afros. Their skin is dark. You can see the whites of their eyes. Look at their hands. Clearly, that's an image of a so-called black man, Yahweh Jesus Christ. Now, going back to the caption that we just read, it says, Christ, whose darkened flesh tone gives him an almost Negroid cast. So the so-called white man looks at this picture, can clearly see that that's a black man. You at home, you can clearly see that that's a black man. But the so-called white man, with all his hatred against our people and all his anger, will turn around and tell you to your face that Christ looks almost Negro. Now look at this picture. Does Yahweh Shah Jesus Christ look almost Negro to you? No. That just shows you that the so-called white man is a liar. He can't tell the truth even when you are looking at it and you can clearly see what it is. He just can't tell the truth. He's a liar. Okay? So I just wanted to show you, brothers and sisters, that so that you can be prepared to see what I'm going to show you in the next book called The Roman Emperors by Michael Grant. All right? Now we're going to focus on this book called The Roman Emperors by Michael Grant. I need for you to keep in mind what you just saw in the previous book, Early Spanish Manuscript Inquisitions. How the so-called white man will have a picture and then lie to you about what you're looking at and can clearly see in the picture. The author of this book called The Roman Emperors is a man by the name of Professor Michael Grant. He's a well-known historian who wrote many books. Here's another book that Michael Grant wrote. This book is called The History of Ancient Israel. Now, if you're not familiar with the picture that's on the cover of this book written by the so-called white professor named Michael Grant, that picture is from a synagogue called Dura Europis. It's one of the oldest synagogues or temples in the world. And that picture is depicting Moses and Aaron leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. And clearly, Moses and Aaron both have afros and they're dark skin. They're so-called black men, for lack of a better term. So this author, Michael Grant, knows a lot about history. So he wrote this book called The Roman Emperors, where he gives you a brief summary of all the different Roman emperors that ruled Rome. Now again, you've been hearing brothers teaching for many years that blacks overthrew the Roman Empire in the year 193 AD. Well, Michael Grant makes mention of the Roman emperors that ruled in 193 AD. 193 AD historically is known as the year of the five emperors. You had five different men that declared themselves emperor of Rome in the year 193 AD. But we're going to focus on two guys. One guy is a guy by the name of Persinius Niger. And the second man is a man by the name of Severus Septimius, who was the last man standing and became sole emperor of Rome in 193 AD. Now you're looking at on your screen a book written about Septimius Severus by another author. The name of this book is called The African Emperor Severus Septimius by an author by the name of Anthony R. Burley. And again, you can see Anthony Burley is a so-called white man. And he referred to Septimius Severus as being African. But Severus Septimius was not African. He was Semitic or Shemitic, which would make him an Israelite. But the white man refers to everybody dark as being African. What I'm trying to show you is that he knew that Septimius Severus was not a so-called white man. Here's another book written by another author. This book is in French. It's called Septiemi Severi. And if you look... It says, Le Africain. Now, I'm not fluent in French, as some may be, but I looked up the word Africain, and it means African. So again, this particular author in French 
is referring to Septimius Severus as being African. And the author of this book is a French woman by the name of Anne Duguet Gagey. So the so-called white man knows very well that Septimius Severus was not a so-called white man. But we're going to read in this book called The Roman Emperors what Michael Grant's description of Septimius Severus was. And you're going to see that this so-called white man who wrote another book depicting the Israelites as being black, this so-called white man knows history, but he's going to try to convince you that what history says is not really what it is. All right, so we're going to go into this book right now. Okay, now let's go into this book, The Roman Emperors by Michael Grant, and let's turn to page 108. Now, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to skip around. I'm not going to really read, obviously, every single word. I just want to read the highlighted captions so you can get a brief understanding of who this guy Septimius Severus was. Septimius Severus, Lucius, 193 AD to 211, was born in 145 at Leptis Magna in Tripolitania. Leptis Magna, for those of you that don't know, is located in what today is known as Libya, North Africa. That's where a lot of the scholars get the idea that Septimius Severus was African because why he was born in North Africa at Leptis Magnus, which is in today Libya. But Severus Septimius was not African. He was an Israelite, and I'm going to prove that. Now let's go down a couple of sentences to the highlighted portion that you see on your screen. His great-grandfather, who was probably of Punic Carthaginian extraction, that's what I want to focus on. Severus Septimius, his great-grandfather, was of Punic Carthaginian extraction. Now, who are the Carthaginians, you might ask? Well, the Carthaginians are Israelites. Can I prove that? Absolutely. Let's go to the Jewish Encyclopedia. Okay? This is the Jewish Encyclopedia circa 1906. And we're going to focus just on the very first sentence for the sake of brevity. It says, Carthage, ancient city and republic in North Africa. Again, that's why scholars say Septimius was African, because uh, Carthage or the Carthaginians were located in North Africa. Okay, so again, it's the ancient city and republic in North Africa of special interest to the Jews on account of the Phoenico or Phoenicio Semitic origin of its inhabitants. So although Carthage was located in North Africa, the inhabitants of Carthage were not Africans, but they were Semites. They were Jews. They were Israelites. And Septimius Severus, his great-grandfather, was a Carthaginian. He was a Semite. He was a Jew. So you understand. Now let's move on to page 111. Now on page 111, this is what it reads in a highlighted caption. It says, he, talking about Septimius Severus, also made his mark as one of the outstanding imperial builders. His native Africa benefited especially from his intensive activity. It can still be admired today at his hometown, Leptis Magna. Now I want to say this too. Once again, it's letting you know that Septimius Severus was from North Africa. That's where Leptis Magna was. Now, for those of you that don't remember, when you read the book uh, from Babylon to Timbuktu, it lets you know that in the year 70 AD, a lot of the Israelites, a lot of the Jews, fled down into Africa. One of the reasons why the Jews fled down into Africa, like brothers teach, is because the Africans looked similar to the Jews. They were black, so the Jews were hiding amongst the Africans. But that's only one reason. The other reason why the Jews fled down into Africa in 70 AD is because you had Semitic communities. You had Jews, Israelites, that were living in North Africa, in Carthage, in Leptis Magna, and in Barca, which is where Hannibal were from. These were Semites or Jews that were living in these lands. They had communities down there. That's one of the reasons why the Israelites fled down into Africa in the year 70 AD. 